Hello everyone, and thank you for joining me again here on the Zone Delium server. You'll notice behind me, the pace is looking a bit different. I've been looking at this thing for a while, trying to get things fleshed out a bit, and came to the conclusion that um, it was looking way too much like a pillager outpost. So I did my best to add little slanty bits on the side. And I'd say it's coming along as a crafting bin, well, crafting stump, far better. However, our only recourse for actually getting in the base now is a bit of a wall jump. Like so. Something we went over yesterday. We've also ended up with three different layers to this little base of ours. I'm debating whether or not I'm just going to build a large rock in here, or if I'm ever going to actually use this space. And up top, we have a little area with some cows in it. To keep these cows from getting up onto the uh, the perimeter, I put in shopping blocks. Ooh. That was graceful. Try that one again. As far as half slabs go, you're not going to find much in the way of a mm. log half slab. But the chopping block mm. is a pretty good substitute. Most blocks in the game, most log blocks anyway, will have a chopping block form specific to it. But some of them can be, uh, be a little bit glitchy, especially some of the log blocks that aren't full blocks. Mm. But luckily, the ones that we're working with are. And only one is the mulberry, which... Uh, Almost did it again. Mulberry, which is a bit unique in the fact that it has bark on the top. But other than that, I think it's come out pretty well. I intend on using this upper area as our kind of an animal pen to keep our guys safe from all the nasty critters that have spawned down there and want to kill them. You'll see I have the pattern put in for our little crafting stump. Uh, you might notice it's a little bit off. The reason for that is that the area up here, these walls, are about 14 blocks across. The problem with the crafting stump is that the crafting area pixels are also 14. These pixels, they're Trixie Hopses. They're not actual full pixels. You can almost kind of see it right there. They don't come out quite to where the full pixel would be. That gave me quite the headache earlier. But I did the best I could. I just kind of had to shave off the uh, outside layer of them. But you get the general shape, which is more or less what I wanted. I think if I ever make a, uh, a map of the area, it'll look about proper. Anyway. Let's, uh, let's get some food in me before I die. You'll notice in my inventory, I've got a couple of odd objects. A scaly bob dropped a horn for me. I've been collecting armor from some of the zomberts. And uh, this thing, Bob, right here. Well, every, I think it's 50 votes that the server gets, it does something called a bacon party, where it'll drop a bunch of items on you. Useful stuff, like whatever this scroll is, it's used for enchanting later. A paper and some wool blocks. I can't use any of this stuff yet, because I'm not at the right age. But, uh, paper and wool are a bit of a pain to make, and I don't know what enchantment this is yet, so I don't want to throw them out. Get my armor on. Alrighty. So, last time, I talked about wanting to get our advancements filled in a little bit. And that's what we're going to do now. We'll start off with the cooking tree. So, rocks, twine, and sticks to make a fire pit. J.E.I. is, of course, your best friend. 
So, let's get our storage opened up. Grab some sticks, some twine, and some rocks. I greatly look forward to getting into the next age so that I can finally use a real crafting bench. But until then, let's work with what we got. Crafting bench, are you okay? You don't look okay. Anyway, we got that done. Let's just plop her down here. I also opened up the interior a bit since we had new walls on the outside. However, I have been a bit lazy and didn't bother doing the back of this building yet. I might get around to that eventually. Alright, now that we got that, we can do the grill. This is going to require some smooth stone or one of the alternate stone types. But in order to get smooth stone at this point in time, well, we don't have a furnace. So, how are we going to do that? Well, our advancements tree helps with that. Up here, we have Cook It Up. Use clay balls and a cobblestone slab to craft the kiln. The kiln can be used to cook stone, well, cobblestone, I should say, into regular stone. I've already gathered some of the clay that we're going to need. Let's get some cobblestone slabs going. Alright. That's a pretty simple one. The kiln does have its uses, but they're very few. You'll find that the grill... <laughs> ooh, I had a feeling that was going to happen. <laughs> the crafting stumps do have a durability to them, kind of like an anvil. That's why I thought those cracks might be. So we're going to need another one. And it always scares me every single time it happens. Without fail. There are a couple other blocks like that as well. I'll put you facing this direction. For instance, the first anvil we're ever going to get is like that. Nothing cracks like crazy when it actually breaks. It scares the bejesus out of me. There we go. Now... The kiln is a bit of a pain in the butt, and the fact that you can't break it once you've placed it down. If you do, all you're going to get back is some clay bricks. I'll pop this right here. However, if you do need to move it, you can shift and right click to pick it up. you notice it turned brown in my hands because this is going to be the final look of the clay kiln. But once I put it back down, it's going to be that color again. Now you need to put these over a fire in order for them to work. However, this is an unfired kiln. We need to fire it. And to do that, we need to place a log block inside of it and let it cook. Once that's cooked, it'll turn into a charcoal block. Charcoal blocks can be either broken down to get low-grade charcoal, or you can light a fire on top of them and the fire will never go out, much like netherrack and vanilla. However, because we are again on a claimed land, the fires aren't going to go out regardless. Here we go. So, if I were to put cobblestone in there, it would cook it as well into smooth stone. However, earlier, I went out and grabbed some andesite because I kind of knew this was going to be coming up. So, let's go back to our grill. 
Three stones and a V pattern. Okay. Two, three. Oh, right. Wrong direction. That'll take some getting used to. Alright, now we hit it with a rock. And we've got our grill. Now once you've got the grill, this thing is completely useless. And honestly, I've never even bothered using one. Well, maybe once or twice, but seriously, the grill is so easy to make, why would you? I want to make a little hole right here. And get ourselves some fire sticks. And you know what, just for the sake of it, I'll actually put the uh, coal block there. Might as well do this the right way. Okay. Now we just plop our grill down. And now we have a cooking source. So let's grab some meat. Let's grab some steaks. I've got a decent amount of it. This thing can hold up to 16 items at a time. And they'll all transfer over to this side once fully cooked. Grab you. Plop you back down over there. The kiln can be used for a lot of the same things that the grill is used for. But in testing, I have found that the grill actually cooks faster than the kiln does. That's something to keep in mind. Now, what else we have? We've got resalt of your labors. As far as salt goes, I've actually seen some recently. We have a little pond just out behind the house. And you'll often find salt over in these. Grab a little bit. And there we go. Now salt is used for more than just food, and you'll see what I mean later on. Ah, creepers. Another reason that having land claims is very important is that explosions are disabled on land claims. Observe. So, another good reason to make sure you've claimed your area. Alrighty. Well, we got that tree built out. Where to next? Well, let's get, uh, let's get this area filled in. Spear and hatchet. Alright. Oh, sticks and plate flint. Easy enough. Oh, actually, I might just plop down a stone right here. There we go. Uh. Here we are. up we have spear fishing this one <laughs> mm, bit tricky mostly just because of spawn rates there are multiple players in the server right now so aquatic spawns are going to be pretty low is there any in our little pond here no alrighty alternatively Shafts over the horizon this way. We've got a much oh, we got a much bigger source of water that I found while out exploring.
And here we are. Oh, we got the sun coming up too. Lovely. Let's just hop on in here. Hmm. I'm not seeing any fishes though. And again, this is one of the drawbacks of playing on a multiplayer server. Ooh, let's not drown. Well, we'll keep our spear on us and uh, keep an eye out for any little fishes that we might come across. For the time being, though, let's go back to doing something else. Next up, achievement wise, Tomahawk. A simple enough recipe, but this one requires a flaked flint point, which we get by hitting a flaked flint on a stone again. There we are. And because this is only a 2x2 two two recipe, we can easily make this in our inventory. Let's see if we can test it on something. Anything still alive in my immediate vicinity? I had a little creeper incident happen right here. I forgot to extend the claim out to my little tree farm, and it cost me. Well. Ah. A horse will do. So let's see how this thing does damage-wise. <laughs> eh, not amazing. Let's get a still target. <laughs> Just gonna right-click and throw it. I'm able to pick it back up again. The spear works similarly. If I hold right-click, and draw it back like a bow. And it'll just drop on the ground. And alternatively, you can just, you know, typically stab something with it. Come here. There you go. Next thing we're going to be working on is going to be the, the flint work blade. We're actually going to get quite a bit of use out of this. We're going to need four flake flint for it. So we're going to need to get ourselves some more flint. Luckily, I keep a stash of gravel on me just, just for these occasions. The work blade is used for a number of different things. And there we go. Now, some of the first things you're going to end up using the work blade for is in dealing with hides. Placing them in my inventory like so, I can create raw hide. This is what eventually will get us leather. Different hide types give you different amounts of raw hide. That cow hide just gave me four, whereas this pig hide only gave me two. This horse hide only gave me four as well. So let's get that put away. And we'll be done with that for now. Next up. In order to get farmland, we're going to need some bone meal, which we can't make yet. In order to get the atlas, we're going to need some feathers and ink sacs. I have the ink sacs, 
whatever our squid I've been able to find. But I haven't been able to get feathers yet. So that's something we'll work on probably later on. So let's uh, move on to the next branch. And we'll start from the top. Dude, where's my biome? This is great for having, if you're having issues finding a Darklands biome. Although you'll probably come across quite a few as you just adventure around. But I have known people that have searched far and wide and never found one. So. The nature's compass is pretty simple. Fleck bone, saplings, and logs. Easy enough. My inventory is getting a bit cluttered. And we'll deal with that soon enough. Alright, grab ourselves some bone. Mm, bit too much. Alright, that goes front and center. Some logs. You know, cardinal directions. And some saplings. You'll notice I automatically get the Unto the Darklands advancement because, again, I found one when I was out exploring. Now, the compass itself is a bit deceiving in that it's going to point you when you first create it to spawn over that way. In order to actually get it to take you to a Darklands biome, you have to right-click with it and then select the type of biome you're actually going to want to look for. I know there's a Darklands mountain biome nearby. I'm going to select that, hit search. And it didn't find one. Let's just go for a typical Darklands. There it goes. I know there was a mountain area in that biome, but I guess it wasn't considered a Darklands mountain. But that is the direction I had found it in. So, there's that. Alright. Put that away for now. Next up. Grind it. The hand grindstone is going to be pretty useful early on. Forgetting what we need. Bone meal. So, we're actually going to need some smooth stone. Six smooth stone. Grab our meat. Now, for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to place both of these to smelt at the exact same time as best I can. So you guys can see the time difference between them. Ready? One, two. I'll see which one turns smooth first. And there we go. Put the other five in here. And this one's still cooking. And there it goes. So, as I said, the grill will be your best friend. The kiln, well, it's only good for certain things. For instance, the charcoal blocks, I believe, can only be made in the kiln. And probably a couple of other recipes. But for the most part, the grill's the way to go. I'll keep that here for posterity's sake. Now, I talked about nutrition yesterday, and there you may have noticed there's an icon right next to it. This is one of my favorite things in this entire mod pack. Merge to nearby chests. What this will do is, much like it sounds, if I click the button, you know something my things in my inventory disappeared. That button looks for all the containers nearby, and if it has the item, which is similar, corresponds with what's in your inventory, It'll simply zap it in there. Alternatively, if you hold down shift 
deposit to nearby chests. This will take everything in your inventory and dump it into the closest container. Be very careful not to do that if you'd like to keep your chests organized, but if you're the kind of person who just empties the whole inventory into whatever chest you can find, that'll be your best friend. Alright, our stone's done. And I went and sorted my sticks. Alrighty. We got a stick. Got our stones. Grab our crafting rock. There we go. Pop that down right there. Now this can be used to create a lot of basic things. If I hover over that and hit uses. Then click on the tab for grindstone. It'll tell me every recipe I can use in it. You notice a little horse. That's because the horse grindstone, which is something we'll make later, has the same recipe types. But yes, you can use this for quite a bit. The thing we're going to be using it for is to get a bit of bone meal. Now, if memory serves, I can grind up. Oh, no. I thought I could grind up the sharp bones. Ah, wrong kind of grinder. But I can get more flaked flint out of it, which I can then turn it to bone meal. You notice that durability is jumping around a bit because it's pulling some of the other bones I had in my inventory into it. Alright, pop that in there. And we right click to grind it up. I'm just going to hold down right click. This is a horribly slow process. But that's the caveman life for you. Alrighty, I'm going to get some of this ground up, get enough bone meal for what we need. I'll be right back. All right, we have our bone meal. And because I just couldn't leave it alone, I went out and hunted some chickens. We got ourselves enough feathers to be able to buy ourselves an atlas. While I was out, I also got ourselves some more farmyard animals. You probably hear them already. I got a few chickens, because we're going to want those later. As well as a couple sheep, because they're very handy. Now, in order to get these guys from where you find them to where you live, there's a very simple way of doing so. We simply shift, right click with both hands empty to pick them up. We can walk around with them. We can even teleport with them. So if you want to do a slash home, for instance, it'll teleport you right back home, carrying the animal, and you can just take it up to wherever you need to. Handy trick to keep in mind. Alrighty. So, we have our bone meal, we have our feathers, and we have our ink sacks. So, now we need to find some villagers. Now, this is another one of those issues you run into on a multiplayer server. For instance, this village over here is dead. And most villages you find probably will be, as mobs take them out over time. This is why we have the shop to offset this problem. To get there, we go warp shop. And here we are, the Zondelium shop. You can buy lots of useful things here. For instance, we have a foods merchant. We can get you some raw food. You need to stay alive. They aren't cheap. A steak for 20 bucks. When you first start off, you're not going to be making much in the way of a salary. But you can offset that. For instance, to this guy. Cobblestone. You can sell this for 50 cents a piece. As with many of the other block types. So we need to get ourselves an atlas, and to learn how to farm. Alrighty. First off, we need a cartographer, which we happen to have one right here. Problem is, this guy's locked out. The admins will come by every now and then and unlock these guys if they get stuck. So, don't worry about that for too much. 
Over here, we have a farmer. Who will give us the farmland we need for eight farm meal? And there we are. Teach a man to farm. Now, because these guys tend to get locked up and the admins are busy people, we have backup villagers in here, including a backup cartographer. Alrighty. Six of them. Eleven of them. And we get ourselves the Empty Atlas. This will be one of your best friends for the first few ages. So now that we're holding it, we simply right click. It's bound to us. This is Atlas number 90. These are sequential from the first time one is opened. So we are the 90th player on this server to open an Atlas. Some players never even bother using these, and I don't know why. Anyway, as long as it's in our hotbar, we'll have a little mini-map up in the corner, or we can take it and put it in our inventory to get rid of it. But since we're here, let's explore a little bit, shall we? I already showed you the food vendor. We've got farmer and cartographer here. These guys have been traded with us so many times that you'll have all of their trades unlocked. We have another farmer here. This is a totem guy. Medicine man for all the totem craft stuff. We might be using him later. Now, you'll notice these guys will trade for emeralds which are unfamiliar to us. However, we can trade things to him to get the emeralds. We can still put those emeralds in this crafting window to get the items that we need. As long as they're not in our hotbar, we won't drop them. In here, there's a variety of different villagers, armorers, and medicine men, and librarians, and clerics. But, you know most of what those will do. Let's take a look around. Uh, over here, we have plants. This guy sells us a whole bunch of saplings. Now, me, I have a habit of collecting saplings. However, in my travels, while I was able to find some dark oak and some birch and other types, I was not able to find the one type I really wanted, which was spruce. So I'm going to buy a couple from him simply by left-clicking. Four. There we go. You'll notice that my total balance now is 52,000. Um, as I said, I've played on this server quite a bit. However, in preparation for making this YouTube series, I had all of my advancements and everything reset so that I could start fresh. However, my balance and things like that did carry over along with my rank. However, we're not going to be using the shop terribly much anyway, so my actual balance doesn't matter very much. Now this guy, he'll probably be one of your best friends if you want to play on this server with me. Rare items. Now, because the Shadowlands can have issues getting all the mobs you need to spawn because other players are taking up the mob cap, you can come here and buy Shadow Gems to help you with your progression, along with other various things. Uh, Stardust is a very common one people like to get because you can only get those from a very specific kind of ore sample, and other players are taking those because they need that Stardust too. Also, the Wild Dog Pelt Boots. These things are incredible. I'm going to buy a pair right now. I can show them off. So, when we equip these, we get a major jump boost. As well as... Oh, I'm actually too tired. Or too hungry to run. That. A major speed boost as well. These things are amazing for getting around anywhere. You craft them hover over and hit R for requirements with wild dog pelt and of course because these things don't spawn as often as they would on a single player world we have the shop here to help you out I happen to like clouds which is why I don't turn mine off and they place the shop right in the cloud level because I guess whoever put it here does like to turn theirs off so bear with that one Ooh, those would take getting used to Already. Uh, shulker shells, of course. The end is going to be pretty harvested from all the other players. And, you know, various other bits and bobs. Next up, we've got seeds. For those of you that are having issues finding certain types. For instance, industrial hemp seeds you won't find in the wild. There are, of course, 
the Better With Mods hemp seed, but most of us think that the industrial hemp's just better. As well, you've got coffee and melon and pumpkin, things that you might have a hard time just finding out in the wild. So this guy's here to help you out. Over in this section, we've got the Other Dimensions vendors. We've got Twilight Forest guy, We've got the Between Lands guy. And well, this guy is also from the Between Lands, but he's very specific to a certain type of thing. We'll get more into these guys once we actually reach those dimensions. Now, of course, we've already seen Sapling Dude and Block Guy. Over here, music discs. There are a few unique ones uh, to the specific dimensions that can be pretty hard to come by. So, if music discs are your thing, We've got a bird for you. Over on this side, spawn eggs. This eh, can be a bit controversial to some, but if you're having a hard time finding chickens, like I did, I literally spent the last half hour to an hour wandering around looking for chickens. Because, you know, I like to do things the hard way. But if you don't want to do that, well, hey, look, there's spawn eggs for chickens, cows, horses, most of the other things that you might want as well as some of the mobs that are just hard to find, like the Darkland stuff. Abyssal zombies, shadow beasts, this guy who's really, really horrible. You know, he costs a lot, yeah, even I can't buy him. And shulkers. But most of these are, aside from Mushroom Cow, well within the price range with a couple of votes. And lastly, we've got the Mom Drop Zombie. Now, personally, I would never sell to this guy. Simply because, well, all of these things are so darn useful. But if you happen to have an excess amount of stuff, for instance, spider eyes, which don't get used very often, we got a place to get rid of them if you don't feel like throwing them in the trash. All right. Alrighty, well, this episode has already started to get a bit long in the tooth, so I'm going to cut her off here, and we can jump back in tomorrow. So, thank you guys for joining me. It's been a pleasure, and I hope you'll join me next time for more Septech on the Zoundelium server. Thank you all, and good night.